Once you guys got another video on how to install Chrome OS on any old PC or laptop, and it also includes Play Store in that Chrome OS as well. You can see we're using the Lenovo Yoga 260 here, and this is an older laptop, uh, sixth gen, I think it is, but we're going to show you how to do it. First of all, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, VIP SCD key. If you're looking for cheap Windows 10 Pro or cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM keys, then check out the links in the video description. Use my promo code capital B capital R 09 and apply this to and get a 25% discount on all your purchases on VIP SCD key. Once you've chosen your product and you've created an account with VIP SCD key, submit your order and you can use PayPal to pay for your purchase. Select the PayPal option, pay now, and they will then send you your key to your account. And then once you get your key sent to your account, just like you'll see on the screen right here, you can use that key to upgrade or even activate uh, your version of Windows or Office. Check out the links in the video description. Once you've got your key, you can activate it by going to the activation center, just like you see on the screen. Okay, so back to the tutorial. What we're gonna to need to do first is download the Chrome OS uh, recovery image. These are legit recovery images for different versions of Chrome OS. As you can see here, we've got Ramos, and we also have a bunch of different ones for different types of uh, Intel processors, and even AMD processors are supported via this method as well. We're using an Intel processor and it's for this version right here. And we're gonna be downloading that version right here. So all you need to do here is choose the option. You can see I'm gonna get the latest one, which is 128.0.6613.133. That's the version I'm gonna be downloading by going over to the little blue icons on the end here. You can also uh, search via brand name if you want you to. Uh, but we're going to be downloading this and putting this onto a USB flash drive here. So first off, let's go ahead and click the download for 128. That's the latest version for that particular one we want to get, which is supported for our Intel processor. And once we've got that downloaded, I'll show you another place where you can get these as well. And these are legit recovery images. So there's no fear of these being tampered with. They are proper images uh, that are supplied for recovery purposes to reinstall Chrome OS on your system. So what we're going to do is we'll let that download. I will also show you this website here where you can do a search for a particular version that you want to do. So let me just go ahead and quickly type in the version that I want to download. It will then do a search and you can see here stable, beta, dev and canary. So these are the different uh, versions that you can download. Go to the recovery image and once you get to the recovery image this is probably the better site to download them because it's a much more easier format to understand we want 128 that's the latest version that will be the stable version as you can see here click download on there and you will see the image will come down it's exactly the same image as you can see on the screen but i just wanted to show you that other alternative website as well you can use next you need to go to github and download the branch framework to get this working and you can see here there's some information about the project on branch framework but as you can see here there is a warning that says branch is not intended a uh, way for chrome os to work at some point chrome os could potentially become incompatible with branch and delete the data unexpectedly so you need to read all this information because really this is not the real way of installing chrome os but it just goes through some of the pros and cons of using this method. So the supported hardware also is listed down here and you'll be able to do this for Intel and also Ryzen processors and Celeron processors here. And what you need to do here is read all of this carefully. It also tells you about unsupported hardware, which is older Intel and AMD CPUs are not supported. And it says DGPUs are not supported either and virtual machines are not supported as well, and ARM-based computers or ARM-based CPUs are not supported right here. You can read this all at your own leisure, but you'd need to go through here and read this as well. There's also install instructions here, which make it super simple to get this up and running. It is a bit of a, a palaver to get it working, but again, if you do wanna to try to get this working, it's always nice to try these little projects out for yourself and learn something along the way. And this is what this channel is all about, education. So we're just learning how to do this 
and you can see here there's also usb installations is what we're going to be doing so we're going to be running this on the usb and there's other ones as well like standalone and there's also ones for dual boot if you want to see other ones let me know in the comments section below and i'll make those videos for you it also talks about the recovery images and it also talks about the cpus and what versions you need to use i've got a 8th gen to 9th gen here and it's going to be using that version right there again that also supports slightly older cpus as well so that's what we're going to go with but use which one uh, for your older system right here and download it it gives you instructions here on how to prepare this through the terminal because you're going to need to use the terminal to rebuild uh, the actual images you're downloading here to create them into an ISO. I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and download uh, this one here by clicking on the latest button here, and this will give us the download options. We're going to also need Rufus because we're going to need to put this onto a USB flash drive because that's what we're going to be choosing to run this off of. But you can do a standalone install and put this onto the system if you want to. Again, like I said, let me know if you want to see that and I'll do that video for you. So we're going to download the version right here, portable version of do. Next, we need to extract all of the files into a folder here. I've created a folder called Chrome OS on my desktop. And what we're going to do is quickly extract all of this stuff right here. And you can see there's four files inside here. I'm going to drag these into another folder called Chrome OS. And once we've got that done, we need to extract the other file which is this one right here this is the image so we're going to extract all and let me close that off and we'll extract this into the same folder and then we'll drag that into the chrome os folder here so extract those files and put them all into one folder once that's done we can then drag that image into our chrome os folder it's always best not to make folders with spaces like i have here I do correct this a little bit later on, so it's always best to have a, a folder with just one name on it, like Chrome OS or one word. So there we go, we've got all that done. We should have now five files inside here. And what we need to do now is we need to use the terminal to basically create our image so we can use this to uh, install it. So let me go ahead and rename this one right here, because that's the instructions it tells me what to do on their website. So I'm just going to call this Chrome OS bin, and we also have all of our files now ready to go. Next up, we're going to need to turn on some features. So let's go to the start button and go to the search and type turn windows features on or off, open this up. And we need to make sure we've got Hyper-V turned on here and we need to come down and there is a couple of other ones we need to turn on here. Now you can also put on Windows Hypervisor platform and you can put Virtual Machine platform and we can also put on here, uh, there's another one that we need to turn on as well. So let's come down here and we need Windows Subsystem for Linux. They're the ones that you need to turn on. This will go ahead and apply these changes. You will need to restart your PC. So let's go ahead and restart. Some updates will happen once this is done. We need to then go back to our terminal window and we can then start to put in some commands to build our image. And all of these commands are going to be on the website on GitHub. And all you need to do is just copy and paste those and put them into uh, your actual terminal window. So let's go to the start button and type CMD and click run as administrator here and say yes to the user account control and then we should have a terminal window like this open and what we need to do here now is we need to put in some commands so we're going to do wsl space dash dash install and this will go ahead and download and install ubuntu now if you find you get some sort of error when you install this then go to the microsoft store and then download Ubuntu there and install it and you should find it will work that's what I did here I've got Ubuntu 22 dot zero four now i need to uh, put in my username you can see it entered a new username here you can put in a username and then all you need to do is put in a password and you should be good to go and we should be back at the terminal window here so once you get here you've got these commands here and you can get them on the github website i'm going to copy this and paste this in and all this is going to do really is do some updates and it's going to go off and then install some uh, software, unzip software 
for us. You will need to put in your password again. So let's go ahead and do that right here. And this will go off and do some updates and download the software and install it for us. So that's now done. Now on their GitHub website, it talks about changing directories and you have to make a bunch of edits and changes. So I've added my own one in here because I think it's easier. So I'm going to go back to my directory here, go to the location and type PowerShell like so. And this will open up in that location. It's a lot easier to do it this way, in my personal opinion. So this is where we are right here. And all we need to do here now is type uh, WSL here and it will put us back into um, our Ubuntu area here right in this location. So rather than doing a bunch of commands and changing stuff, now we can type ls here and you can see inside the directory there's all our files. We need to uh, put all these together and what we're going to do is basically use this next command here. So we've installed the software already. This is the file name we need to change. So I'm going to quickly change this to chromeos.bin because that's the name of the file in the directory that we're in right here, as you can see up the very top. And it's going to convert this into a Chrome OS dot image. And it's going to put all those files into that Chrome OS dot image. So that's basically what that's doing there. And that's why we needed to install that software earlier. So what we need to do here now is I'm going to quickly copy this command and we're going to paste this in. So it's make sure you got this command correct. Otherwise it won't work. And once we've got this done, you just paste it in like so. And then you can now see there is the command here, push enter. It's going to ask us to put our password in because we've changed from command prompt to PowerShell. And you can see here now it's going to start creating our partition table. And this is going to be doing all of this inside that image. So when we put that image onto a USB flash drive, it's going to boot to that USB flash drive and use that as a, a ba basic install an operating system running off a USB flash drive. But like I said earlier, you can actually install this and run this as a standalone on a laptop or PC if you wanted to. So if you have an old uh, computer that is becoming end of life, uh, Windows 10 is coming to an end and you can't upgrade to Windows 11 and you want to give it a new lease of life, you could use something like this. Again, the risk factor on this is pretty high because obviously there's no guarantee that this is going to work long term. And again, they mention all that on the website. So make sure you understand exactly what you're getting into. So what we're going to do here now, as you can see here, Chrome OS disk image has been created. If you want to dual boot this disk image with uh, grub to win type dual boot and uh, and this will continue on. But otherwise, we want to install this disk image onto a USB flash drive. And that's what we want to do or a micro SD card. You can do that here and push enter. And now you can see you can now install this onto your USB flash drive using Rufus. That's now done. So let's go ahead and take a look. Here is our image. This is the one it's just created for us and it's 14 gigabytes in size. So you're going to need a relatively uh, larger uh, USB flash drive, maybe 32 gigabytes will do it. And you can then use this and put this image onto it. For that, we're going to use Rufus. So let's fire up Rufus. Now you can see the device says uh, Android TV. But don't worry, that's because I did a Android TV video uh, not so long ago and I'm still using that USB flash drive. So I'm now gonna overwrite that. The presets are all set for you. So all you need to do here is click start and it's gonna erase all the data on that USB flash drive. Yes, mine will be called Android TV. I could have renamed that before we started to say for instance, Chrome OS and that would have been Chrome OS but you get the general idea. We are actually using our image. As you can see here, Chrome OS image, we are using that. Now all we need to do is plug in our USB flash drive into our laptop or PC that we're going to be using. I'm using this old ThinkPad here. I think this is a sixth gen, I can't remember. And again, it's a bit dusty. It does need a bit of a dust off. But again, this would, should work perfectly fine. You need to change the boot order to boot to your USB flash drive. And this will then fire up. You should see the Lenovo sign here or whatever sign you've got on your laptop or PC. And then you should see the Chrome OS right here. And this is now starting to load. Again, this does take a fair bit of time because it is actually loading up to our USB. So you can see here loading. 
uh, branch framework. So we're just going to let that do its thing. And again, this did take a bit of time, so be patient. You might think it's not working. It is. It's working. It's just got to uh, read that drive and configure everything, and it will start to fire up. You should then see something looking like this, Chrome OS on the splash screen, and then you should see the setup part here. Again, welcome to Chromebook. Again, then you can go through here. It's going to ask you for your Wi-Fi to connect to Wi-Fi. I cheated here and basically just put a dongle in to go to Ethernet to convert it so it works straight away. And then I just went ahead and used for personal use. You can sign in as a guest to try it out if you want to, but I'm going to go ahead and use personal use. And again, you just follow the on-screen prompts just as you would if you're installing this. You can set up dark theme mode or light mode, whatever you want to do here. And that is it. It's now installed and ready to go. And you can now use it just like you would any other Chrome OS. It does have the Play Store there and all the other features that you would have on one of these devices. Again, make sure you read the website fully and understand what you're getting into when you do this. I'm doing this for educational purposes only to show you how to do it. And that's basically how you would do it and run it off of a USB. Anyway, that's it for this one. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall catch you in the very next video. Bye for now.